welcome each and everyone wherever you're tuning in from whether you're tuning in from africa from asia from antarctica from oceanic from north america from south america wherever you are tuning in from good night good morning good evening good afternoon and welcome each and everyone as i said before this is your girl hp i don't think i have to introduce myself anymore to you guys but i still want to do it this is your girl hp coming to you live from hp chat track and of course it's about track and field business already i see mr lansford lyons he is on the live wherever you're coming from facebook youtube welcome welcome and with me tonight is an outstanding olympian an educator someone who has been giving and giving and giving back to our track and field so tonight with me is miss vilma charlton help me welcome miss vilma charlton to the studio miss vilma welcome welcome i like i like your small screen <laughs> welcome oh, but well, thanks for having me on and hello to all the viewers online happy to be here thank you very much for being here thank you for making the time to come and hang out with us tonight to tell us about your story about your journey um as an athlete coming competing for jamaica at the olympic games in the 60s and in the 70s miss vilma charlton welcome again and before we get into the meat of the matter i i like to ask people about your childhood tell me a little bit about your childhood where in jamaica you're from where you hail from tell us a little bit about your early days before you became an olympian okay i was born in keith saint anne which is one of the parishes that a lot of Olympians come from. Um, my parents were teachers, so they stayed in Keith for about two or three years. And then we moved to St. Catherine, where they ran a school, Point Hilly School was the school that my father headed. My mother was a senior teacher, so she was an assistant teacher to my father. And uh, we stay there for most of our lives. I have uh, one sister, Josset, and two brothers, Glenroy and Carl Anthony. And uh, we know, well, after my parents retired, they came to King Kingston and they live in St. Andrew. Wow, you are from what we call what is the term for St. Anne? Is it the Garden Parish, the Green Parish? Yes, it's the Garden Parish, but more recently we have found that a number of the fast athletes hail from St. Anne. Indeed, as much indeed. As from Trelawney. From Trelawney. Of Clarendon and Manchester. Indeed, indeed, indeed. You are from St. Anne. You're from the other side of the island. You attended and competed for one of Jamaica's prestigious all-girls school, St. Andrew High School. Tell me a little bit about that transition from St. Anne into Kingston. No, it was St. Anne and then to St. Catherine. So I took my... Well, common entrance but at the time they were not given full scholarships it was half only one person got a scholarship from each parish after many years then they started giving um, more scholarships but point Hill was where i took my common entrance exam which took me into kingston st andrew high school and there i was a boarder so uh, when my parents dropped me off at St. Andrew, my parents dropped my sister off at Ulmer's and she boarded as well. And my brothers went to Calabar and they boarded as well. 
Wow. Well, it's not a far distance from Kingston. It's, it's about 40 minutes from Spanish Town. And to Kingston, I guess it's another 30 minutes or so, 39, 40 minutes. Mommy, mommy shipped you guys off very early. <laughs> well, that was how it was then. Because my, my sister, I went at 11 and my sister actually went at age 10. <laughs> wow. To boarding school. And this is why years after they decided that children should not go to high school until they're 12. Because they were getting out of high school too early. Yes, indeed. Girls' Champs started in 1957. You competed at Girls' Champs in 1961 to 1963 in the 100 and the 200 in the sprints. Tell me a little bit about that period for you back in the 60s competing at Girls' Champs. And this, is, this was way before it became Boys and Girls' Champs. Okay, it was a book up for St. Andrew, much the same as it was for Immaculate, because Immaculate, while I was running Immaculate, never ran at all in girls' champs. They thought it was unladylike. And I think St. Andrew kind of thought it was unladylike for ladies to be running all over the place. But my physical education teacher, the late Barbara Recor, Barbara Grant Recor, she discovered me in a physical education class and she decided, among other girls, there was Darlene Pagan, Carol Mitchell, Carol Steele, a number of us she spotted in different forms and that was why she decided that St. Andrew should enter girls' championships. So what was it like for you competing? Was it something that you enjoyed? Was it something that you dominated or it was just for fun? It was for fun. In my time, we had one day to, to do heats, semifinals and finals. One day? One day. And I remember at the end of the day, I fainted or I, I, I started running slow to the finish line, even though I won. And I, I have a picture of them bringing me a cup of tea in with the sauce underneath. You know, they were so British then. They mm. brought some tea in a nice cup with a saucer. So um, when I went back home after champs, which we won then, and we haven't won it since, after the championships, um, Mrs. Grant, the late Barbara Record Grant, decided that champs could not be held over one day anymore. And it was then that it went to two days. So, so I would say, Miss Vilma, you, you're from what you would call the classy era. <laughs> you mean with the British? Yes, with the British and the tea. <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe you so. are... Then all the schools then had um, principals from England, just about all of them. Oh. Had the, principal, the principals then were from England and they were females. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, you're educating me, you're educating me. Um, Pepperdine University in California, from Jamaica to California, way a long way from home. Describe the transition for me from the Jamaican culture into the American culture in the 1960s. What was that like for you in the state of California? Well, it, it was different, but the weather was nice and it reminded me of Jamaica, of course. But it was not without, I would say, turmoil. I left Jamaica on a one Sunday morning on a sunny day from Montego Bay. At that time, Delta flew from Montego Bay. So my father had taken me to Kingston for me to stay with one of my teammates, family members who took me to Montego Bay. So when I got to California and took out the address of this coach that was supposed to have given me a scholarship, there was no such address. Wow. All we saw, all we saw um, were the railway tracks. And so 
That's right. And so because I was familiar with some of the athletes that were competing for America, I told the porter, who fortunately was a Jamaican, he told me to wait until he got off work and he would try to take me to, um, to this coach, this so-called so dread. So, Ms. Vilma, so you're saying you got information to enter the United States and you would have been picked up by a coach at the airport. When right. you got there, there was no, no coach? No coach, nobody to meet me because obviously... It, it, well, the, it was a scam. Me, it was a really... No, what happened eventually, I found out, he didn't want me to go into a school system. He wanted me to run for his club. Oh. And then, and then he said, well, you may have to go home and come back in January when I can get you into a, into a school or a college. And I said, no way. I already bid everybody adieu. So I wasn't going to go back home. So fortunately, though, Una Morris was already in California. Thank God for that. And I remember her on the, well, before that, I went to the police station and because I knew some athletes who were already competing on the world scene, I told the police, I gave the police these names. And of course, in those days, there were a few in numbers, especially women. So he knew them and he called one of the parents and one of the parents came and picked me up and then took me to the coach. How old he, were you? How old were you? Uh, 17 or so, but I oh, guess wow. I wasn't, I guess I wasn't frightened because I used to board. I used to board at St. Andrew High School. And of course I wanted to, to leave Jamaica on this so-called scholarship, you know, but um, it wasn't frightening. And then I knew that Una was there and Una assured me, she said, don't worry VC, coach, her coach will take care of me. And so I stayed with them for six months run up a storm because I know how to run up a storm to get a real scholarship, which I did. The coach from Pepperdine, fortunately, he came back to Jamaica. He came to Jamaica when I went back for the summer holidays and offered me a scholarship. Well, a scholarship, a half scholarship. In those days, only one university had scholarships. And that was Tennessee uh, Tennessee State, the Tiger Bells, all the others were given half scholarships. So my parents had to pay for my board. I got tuition, but not through my board. Wow. What, what, what a story. I, I would have been livid, frightened, because here you yeah. are leaving Jamaica, who is a small, a smaller space where if you're in half a tree and you're stranded, you can call somebody to get you. But you were in another country and California is one of the biggest states in, in America. Right. Well, I wasn't so frightened because I, I knew when I went to the, the Olympics, my first Olympic Games, I met two Americans on the team and they told me that they also lived in um, California. So as long as I got somewhere to stay, as long as I could have made a link with someone, then, you know, it would have been fine. Beautiful. I, I wasn't too, too frightened. Wow. You're a true Jamaican. You graduated with a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. How were you able to balance sports and academics I mean, the both of them are equally demanding. How were you able to balance academics in order to maintain your grades, to, to maintain um, your scholarship? It just kept you on a pathway and it kept you focused. And the athletes will tell you that your grades were best when we were busiest. Once you know that you have track meets from January to the summer, you, 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 you map out your plan, you know, you, you plan for that. When, when you don't have any track meets, all oh, the homework can stay until tomorrow and the next day and so on. So, so we were very focused. And the two, today athletes will tell you the same thing, that when they are very busy in the track and field season, everything is mapped out and their grades are usually best in that season. Okay, before we go on the, any further, let's just say hi to some people who are coming in. Venice Brown, 
Good evening. Thank you for being here. Ozzy Dixon, Lance Ford Lyons, Marlene Green, Dorothy Scott Genius, and Olympian herself. She's saying, hi, everyone. Hi, Vilma. Nice to see you on the program. Uh, Carrie Ann Phillips is saying um, that she glad it worked out for you. Um, you know, when you ended up in California, no one to pick you up and stuff. So Carrie Ann Phillips is saying, glad it worked out. I am glad it, I'm happy that it worked out also, Carrie Ann. Marlene Green is saying, Miss Charlton was brave. <laughs> she was brave indeed, because I would be on the plane coming back to Jamaica. Um, Ethelyn Tate, another Olympian on the live, she's saying good evening to everyone. But coming back to you, Miss Charlton, I call you Auntie Vilma, but um, you were inducted in Pepperdine University Hall of Fame 2017 for your contribution in track and field. How big a deal was this for you after all the challenges that you've been through to get to um, that level? Well, Pepperdine was good to me and good for me. Um, it was a Christian school. So, you know, you, you got to go to church on the campus, especially. So you didn't need anyone to pick you up per se. Nowadays though, it's easier because the colleges now have buses where they transport athletes to the different faiths. But um, I, I, I enjoyed Pepperdine. And there's another Jamaican who went there the same time I was there. Well, two Jamaicans, Maureen Seymour and everybody who, in, who works in the corporate um, world in Jamaica would know him. And every day he speaks about Pepperdine. It was really good for me. And the foreign students were excellent. We had a lot of foreign students from all over the world. That was also great. And as you know, each university has its own cluster of foreign students. So they always meet together and do things together. So this, was, this was in the 60s. We're talking about the 60s before a lot of things um, became popular and stuff. How different was the culture then than what it is now, based on your recollection? In America? Mm -hmm. Both America and Jamaica and the transition from one culture to the other. Is yes, there any significant difference? Yes, it would be different um, in the mornings when we would say good morning to people in Jamaica. Nobody cared, <laughs> you know, in America, they just pass you or they look at you as if to say um, good morning. I mean, why are you saying good morning? That was different. Mm -hmm. um, the classrooms that had the lectures, we are accustomed to saying ma'am and or sir. Yes, you know, sir. And, mm -hmm. and, who would sometimes call the teacher by their first name. That was different too. Um, basically, I think that was the main difference. But I did not feel any effects on that because, you know, after your classes, you're going to huddle together with your track and field friends. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. was, that was my family. Fortunately for me, like I said before, I met them at my first Olympic Games. That was Marilyn White and Terezine Brown. I met them on the U USA team. And so we just remain friends. And we are friends even up to today. And we're going to segue into the Olympic Games. You've competed at a number of championships for Jamaica. You've competed at the Pan Am Games, the Commonwealth Games. But what was it like competing at your first Olympic Games? I think you were 17 when you went yes. to your first Olympic Games. What was, what was the atmosphere like? The atmosphere was great, mixed with a lot of nerves. And then for me, I did not do an individual event, whereas Carmen, my teammate, she did an individual event, which was in hurdles. So I had to wait it out. So it was very nerve wracking waiting to run, you know, relays are the last events. So it was very nerve wracking. But my experience in Japan 
you notice how the, Jap the Japanese are very friendly and you notice how they, are, they, they flock to Jamaica. Yes, and they're very clean too. They're very clean people. They they were really gracious. Um, the, everybody wanted to sign, wanted us to sign their autograph book. Uh, they were just friendly, and the children were very warm. For those who had seen black black children before or black people before, there was one morning we walked down and and when we turned the corner, the children were playing and they were so frightened. The parents assured them, assured us that that's okay. The first time that they're actually black people. Wow. And, and this was what, the 1968 or 1964 Olympic Games? 1964. Okay. And okay. The, the people in Japan, I remember for the opening ceremonies, we were walking along the road going into the stadium and one when we passed a set of children school children all we heard was a chant jamaica jamaica mckinley mckinley and wow that was, awesome. that was awesome for me so my first olympic games was my best and still is wow mckinley you know what that means 1948 yes they knew the history yes yeah. It is amazing how well some country knows our track and field history. It is amazing. And if you go somewhere and they mention Mr. McKinley's name, they know about the history oh, yes. of, oh, yes. of our track and field. You competed yes. in an era where the sport was considered amateur. No big money was being made like now. Um, what kept you motivated and focused that led to three consecutive um, Olympic Games, 1964, 1968, 1972? What was your motivation? Well, at the time, there was no money, so there was no thought of, of, of going pro until 1973 after I retired. Then I had a stint of, they call it the International Track and Field Association, where the money they were giving was like a thousand dollars, you know, for third place, two thousand for second, and maybe a little more for the first place with a gift. But for me, I was happy to get an education and didn't have to pay for it. That was key. Indeed. And of my father used to say, you, I must enjoy the, the, the culture of the people, you know, so you wherever, I mean, sometimes I wanted to go home and he said, no, you stay there and enjoy the culture of the people. So I got taken into families for, for um, Thanksgiving weekends. And basically, some of them became my parents because if they had a banquet, at um, Pepperdine, for example, they used to have the father-daughter banquet. I didn't have a father to give, and one of the, one of the parents would come, would, would take me, or come along with me. So it was good. It was rich, and I have no regrets, and I still talk about those experiences. Indeed, indeed. Before we go any further, good night, good morning, good afternoon, if you're just joining us i am here tonight with an outstanding jamaican olympian triple i call her triple olympian miss vilma charlton uh miss vilma someone on the in the audience is saying did olympian pablo mcneil um also attended pepperdine yes he did and he oh. was Actually, he ended up as my coach because the USA coach was not doing much with me. So he, along with Leo Davis, who was a national table tennis player, he also, he along with Pablo McNeil coached, coached me. Outstanding. While I, attending, while I was attending there. So literally Pablo coached himself as well and so did Leo, you know, but it was a good experience. And I'm telling you, those days I used to see Pablo McNeil put his hand in his pocket, taking out money, sending Leo to go and buy shots so that I could practice starting. Life was just so different. It was so different. Can't be forgotten. 
Indeed. This is what you call real, authentic story. No, as it is right now, we have a trials, as we know, the national championship, especially for, um, it is very big when we have a championship year, the Olympics, our world championship. Um, what was it, how were you guys selected back in the 60s and the 70s and the 40s for an Olympic team? Did you have to come to a trials? No, we didn't. In fact, we didn't have that many um, girls running. We went to Tokyo without a reserve, just four girls. We didn't have anybody. If one person got sick, that would have been it. But um, there was no trials. The trials started when Mr. Teddy McCook took office because naturally the, the, the sport had grown. And towards the end of my career, some of the athletes not the females, they were sending bogus times, and so they didn't like that. But what we were asked to do then was to send um, reputable re times that were recognized either in a magazine, and there was a track and field magazine that they could go to to see which races we ran, where, and what times we did. So that wasn't difficult. But as the, the sport in Jamaica grew, naturally a trials would have been important. So I would say 1972 or thereabouts was when I ran in my first trials. Wow. So you guys, the selection process back then, it was um, totally different. As you said, you have to prove that you um, put down a mark and the mark was what it was. Interesting. Right. Uh, you made your first Olympic team, as I said before, I did my research, you made your first Olympic team at age 17, you would have been 18 in December. How early did you know that you wanted to compete at the Olympics? Did you have an Olympic dream early in your life? Most definitely, because my coach was an Olympian. My coach was, well, two of them, Keith Garner had me in the youth club that I participated in in Jamaica. That's another thing. Those clubs are not as rich. The clubs nowadays just play football, but we used to have um, youth clubs to teach you everything, how to take minutes, etc., etc. So he was my coach and he was an Olympian. Um, Ter McKinley was also my coach at the national level and he was an Olympian. And that was always his dream for us because in those days, you only had the four games, nothing else to look forward to. What were, the to. what were the four games that you had back then? And it's, they still have them. The CAC games every four years, the Pan American games every four years, the Commonwealth games every four years, and the Olympic games every four years. No, 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 they have all sorts of games. No, we have all sorts of meat. You cannot keep up. When you look at a track and field calendar, it is, it is crazy. It is ridiculous. When you look, you can have a track and field meet every week from as early as January, and it runs until September. Ah, uh, not one. <laughs> we have several many. Yes. yes, all over the country. And this is what is so special about our track program here. During the COVID year, years, two years, we had to have at least seven meets because remember the gatherings had to be smaller. So we, we had about seven meets every weekend, small meets all over the country. Marlene awesome. Green, Marlene Green in the audience, she's saying um, we've come a long way, which is which is true. Yes, that's but true. Let me, you see, I like to remind you athletes of your achievement. And this is kind of one of my favorite part. And um, I'm, we're going to look at some of your achievements now. But before we get to your achievements, someone in the audience is asking, Lance Ford Lance is asking, did you have indoors and outdoor meets back then? Oh, yes. And those are always fun. Because indoors, when you run indoors, you can get away with anything. <laughs> you know, you can bounce and it's okay as long as the person doesn't fall. 
and and it's it, it's usually the, the tracks are a little nice and all but then it used to have banks you know so to pass someone it was very difficult so the yeah. aim was to get out in front and stay in front but yes i have won i, I did win several races indoors I get the feeling that the Jamaicans don't like indoors. Indoors is not really our thing. And maybe it's because it's not a part of our culture. So maybe it's so. not some it's not it's not something that the athletes fancy. But they still do well in it. You mm -hmm, know, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we enjoyed it because it was different. We just thought it was a great experience to be running indoors. And yeah. and indoor competition has to happen because some states have winter and so you can't all wait until summer to compete so indoor is here to stay indeed so it, is useful. it is useful indeed uh someone else on the in the audience osborne dixon he's saying i can only recall the names of four women in the That's 1960 right. sprinting vilma charlton carmen smith isn't it carmen phipps no, no, she was before us. She oh. was with Phipps was with um Cynthia Thompson. Okay, okay, okay. I, to us, it was three of them that went. Same thing. Okay. Right He's saying Vilma Charlton, yourself, uh Carmen Smith, uh Adeline Mayer, and Una Morris. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to be honest, the name Adeline Mayer, I don't know. I've never heard that name before. So I learned something else tonight. But I know of uh, Dr. Una Morris, you, Miss Charlton, and of course, Carmen. But the name Adeline Mayer is not ringing a bell. Yes, she 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 was excellent too. She was a good hurdler as well as Carmen okay. was. And um, she worked with the Red Cross in 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 new york but back then nobody stayed long in the sport you know mm -hmm. once you got patient you just moved on and she passed away about two or three years ago and it oh. was very funny when um ruth said to me she ruth came to jamaica and i think she was inducted in some hall of fame mini hall of fame out here at jamaica mm -hmm. and Adeline was one of them, and Ruth was so happy that she got to meet Adeline. She said, finally, I got to meet the fourth person of the relay team. And wow. That she was, you know, wanting to meet us all. What a great story. I mean, there are so many great stories coming out of Jamaica's um, track and field, especially in the earlier days when there was no compensation and you know women like you and the men just kept going out of pride for country love for the sport and you know you 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 made us proud you know when we look back at the history that officially started at the olympic games as a country 1948 uh, and another person uh Ethelene tate is saying great track story miss charlton uh, Linford Lyons is saying, what was the best time you did in an event? Can you remember? It was 11th, a little bit, like 11 one. one or two of them might have been wind-aided, but I did get to like 11 one. When I returned to Jamaica, I was on the top 10 list for more than 10 years. I can remember that. Beautiful, but beautiful. And I think I did a wind at 23.5. But Una Morris, Una Morris was fourth in her four first Olympic Games. In her wow. Finals of the 200 meters. Wow. So, Barely missed out on a medal. That fourth spot is so, it's right. tough. Right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let us talk yeah. about some of your achievements now. Man, you've achieved so much. I don't know if I'll have all night to mention these, but I will mention a few. Uh, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, three Olympic Games, 1964, 1968, 1972, medalist at the Pan Am Games, medalist at the Commonwealth Games, 
You are currently a vice president at the J3As, which is Jamaica Athletics Administrative mm -hmm. Association. You're an educator lecturer at the University of the West yes. Indies, or was, uh, mm -hmm. an International Amateur Athletics Foundation instructor president of the Olympian Association of Jamaica, or was, support to the Jamaican athletes to earn athletic scholarships in the U.S. You are the co-author of the book, Jamaican Gold, Jamaican Sprinters. My mouth is getting tired. Miss Vilma, Auntie Vilma, as I call you. Your resume is very impressive. What were some of the challenges you faced while navigating this level of success? Well, for me, especially when I came back to Jamaica, the chat meets were a lot. And you think I have done a lot, a number of persons, including Bridget, my daughter. We really have not written a lot really have not really i mean it was a book of why that book came out in 2010 about why jamaicans run so fast because we ourselves used to joke about it when people used to ask us why is it you guys run so fast we say well it's the food it's the yams and the so on but somebody really came out here in 20, 2008 and said he wanted to study why is it that we ran so fast? And we, we should be doing a lot more of these studies, really. Mm -hmm. Totally you agree. Know? Yeah. But it was good that I was able to do at least that one. Similarly, Hubert, who did the 100, 100 years champs book, that, mm -hmm. just from, that it was written because all that history would have been lost. Nobody would be here to tell the tale. Indeed, indeed. I, I, I had the same thought about that book, Champs 100. And I said, you know, if Mr. Lawrence and company had not done that book, where mm -hmm. would we go? Where would we go to find the history? Because I, I was trying to find some Champs history the week before Mr. Hubert Lawrence passed away. And I called someone and she said, let me call you, Bert, for you. There, there's a lot of information that I have that was um, confirmed by Mr. Hubert Lawrence. Just send him a message about something about champs, and he will say if it is so or it is not so. So you're right. A lot of that information up to 20, before 2010 was captured so we need to continue the legacy we need to continue documenting right. the, the legacy we we need to um continue are you still a lecturer at the university of the west indies no it, um what it is i was in a program that assessed the teachers colleges in conjunction okay. with the university so okay. my base at the university and when the teachers were to graduate, they are certified by us at the university, the Ministry of Education, and the tertiary institutions, all the colleges. So my base was really there. I mean, I did one or two lectures, uh, lectures um, in the evening, but it wasn't for long, like the okay. year before I retired. But my basic job was to assess teachers. And I'm happy to tell you that our Jamaican teachers can teach. They teach well. And so physical education patterned itself of teaching the math, the English, the social studies. We teach well. And that is why we have a lot of success right now in the sport. We Indeed. not only tell to do, but we explain why they must do what we tell them what to do. And if they don't do it, what would happen if they did not do it? So we're, we're, our teachers are good, our teachers, all, all the subject areas. I can attest to that, that the teachers' colleges put out some good teachers. Indeed, 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 indeed. And even with our athletes, as you mentioned, physical education, most of our athletes were discovered in PE. Exactly. So we knew what to look for. <laughs> we knew how to spot them. 
And that is why some escaped, of course, because they were lazy. But mm -hmm. once you're a tall person, and if it's not track and field, we would send them, we would recommend them to another sport, like netball or something. But yes, it has been a journey. You are currently a vice president of one of the of the top, I would say, track and field federation in Jamaica. Tell me a little bit about your responsibilities as a vice president at the J3s. Well, I am basically in charge of the officials. Um, a few years ago, we used to have seminars for them, which would have been done by the teachers that we have in our midst as officials, because they would have done the same course at the teacher's college. So whether you're going to be a track official or not, we teach the rules of each sport and we also teach officiating. So I am in charge of the officials here and every weekend when Monday morning comes, I have to start afresh to find officials for one or two meets that we would have at the end of the week. And more recently, I had a, I was a part of the Women's Commission, which started in the region, the NACAC region, North America, Central Caribbean region. And um, for Jamaica now, we did things like etiquette dining, um, grooming, which is still a challenge because I still see a lot of slippers going to places where they shouldn't be going. No, the new, <laughs> the new thing now, Miss Vilma, is the Crocs. Yeah. Yes, and um, a few weeks ago, the, the twins, Kishia Thorpe and, and Keisha and Trisha Thorpe, they gave a scholarship to the most promising school in Champs or who came out, you know, as the most promising. In my honor, they also gave a scholarship in the honor of Hubert and Mesam. And those two were responsible for grooming this young lady that gave the scholarship. And so she decided she wanted to do me to give her my roses. No. But I and I agree with that. I totally agree with giving the roses no. I totally agree. Totally. But they're taught these things, you know. Some receive it, some don't. So we we have had seminars in, like I said, etiquette dining. Um, speech, the Hubert and Messam used to have training in talking, giving interviews, um, and so on, or just to keep in touch with their parents. I know years ago when Clifton Forest was alive, we used to visit the homes of some of the parents in the rural areas, because some of them weren't comfortable sending their children on trips with persons they didn't know. So we were, we went, you know, we're the go-between for some of those persons. But it has been rewarding. And I guess because so much was poured into me and others like me, myself, we are giving back. And we just hope that we can encourage some of the stars when they retire that they will also give back because it's necessary. It you know, is, it is, people. it is. Uh, let me ask you something, Ms. Vilma. A lot of schools are struggling as it relates to um, maintaining or having a sustainable sports program. What are some of the reasons that you think this is happening? Based on what you've seen, you've been giving back to the sports for years. You've been in the system uh, in, in your opinion, or based on what you've seen, why is this happening? Well, the school system is not supposed to be responsible for sports. Well, as it is now, it's not budgeted for. Physical education is budgeted for, but not sports. And that is why the alumni associations are so vibrant, especially in the traditional high schools. But Ruth, Ruth Williams seems to can tell you the money that they get, that some schools get for physical education, can barely buy balls and ropes and bats to do basic physical education lessons. It's something let, like 2.5 cents per capita per person. And that's not a lot of money. 
But let me um, ask you something, Miss Vilma. Um, based on where we are, as far as I am concerned, and the data is there to show us, and it is obvious, two of the main things that put Jamaica on the map, outside of our personality as Jamaicans, sports and music. In your opinion, I don't want to put you on the spot, but in your opinion, do you think that more funds need to be allocated for sports within the schools? Because remember, you know, Miss Vilma, sport is now a business and it is also a career. So while we're developing people for academic success, we have to understand that not everybody will get to that level so and because we don't want to leave anybody behind how do you feel about more funds being allocated for sports within the schools and from where i worked at the minister of education from the budget from the budget they hardly get money for the other subject areas let alone sports so, and because I worked at the Ministry of Education, I know for a fact that education struggles in Jamaica. I know. The budget is meager for Jamaica. We just have to find other ways. And thankfully, the alumni associations do help out with the sports programs. True. Because that, that's not budgeted for by the Ministry of Education. Physical education, yes. So you can teach the basic skills. Then they can go on to, to doing the sports at a higher level. But I, I couldn't sit here and ask the government to put in more money because, first of all, they would have to put in more money in the physical education program. And so we have GC Foster College now, and they are struggling too. It's, it's, it's not cheap to fund a sports program, it's not cheap. Yes, I know. I was trying to get a budget from a coach, from Coach Corey Bennett, and it was when you listen to the different dollar signs, when you look at um, medical, when you look at nutrition, when you look at transportation, housing, when you look at everything, it's some, it's some big dollars. Yes. And if they are going to attract me every single weekend, can you imagine that budget? for meals and transportation to and from for every single week and until champs, yeah, it, it's, it's a lot. So we encourage, well, some alumni associations really don't need encouragement, the traditional ones. And that is why our Friends of Jamaica track and field, we are working with schools that are young. They are new to the whole business of, of um, old boys and old girls. So, we hope to inspire some of the past students. And like I say, some are very young, so they wouldn't have past students yet. But for the older secondary schools that have no turn high schools, we encourage them to start something. Like yes. Bustamante, for example. They should have a few old girls and boys by now because they used to feed their technical. That's how we have to do it. Otherwise, indeed. I, I couldn't ask the government to sponsor it. And we do get a lot of support for sports at the national level, the elite level, you know. We get assistance to go to the character games. We get assistance for all the big games in some form or fashion. But it's expensive. It's a lot of money. But the, no. the, country, needs it. the country needs sports. Indeed, indeed. We need it more than ever because we see where sport is taking a lot of our young people places. We see where sport has become their bread, as we would say in Jamaica. It is their livelihood. That's how they pay their bills. But now that you've, you've retired from the sport and you're not teaching anymore and all of that, where is Miss Vilma? No, in her life. What are some of the projects that you're working on? Ask my daughter. I know that well, you're a busy woman because I'm I'm following you, so I know. Um, we are trying to write stories or stories. My story, Ruth Williams' story, Lilith. Beautiful, story. beautiful. Do that, even if it's a page or two. Are you are you doing it in a book format? 
Yes, we. it was suggested that we do that first. It's What's the title? What is the title of that book? I want to hear the title. I'm not sure yet. It's one of okay. Kathy's and it's Tingle. She suggested that she could help us with that. Beautiful. But it's something that we talk about a lot, but I guess we are not writers at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Olympian Ruth, Olympian Dorothy Scott Genius is saying, former fair, very technical star girl. She's saying HP Vilma was a chaperone for many Jamaican teams. She was my chaperone on my two Olympic games. Wow. And we have remained friends with all of them. Ruth Williams, Kathy, all of them. Including indeed. some from Bahamas too. Who told me that? Indeed, indeed, indeed. You, I spot you on TV at the Carifta Games recently. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you at the Carifta Games. You returned from the Carifta Games in Grenada just a few days ago, um, yes. where Jamaica, dom Jamaica dominated once more, almost 40 years dominating. Your thoughts on the Jamaica junior athletes and the legacy that they keep building? I think it's awesome when I look at the other Caribbean countries that are using some of their college students. We don't. Good um, point. Good point. Jaden, the, 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 the long and triple jumper. He could have gone to character last year. He could have come this year because he's still a junior. But we took a decision many years ago that we would never bring back those who have gone up on scholarships to come back to run on our character team. It's not necessary. And it also will cut into the fact that um, you're, it's cramping somebody's opportunity to get a scholarship too. You know, this is their breakout. And I know a number of the Caribbean islands had, uh, had college students competing. I'm glad that you raised that point. Um, just today, just today, I was saying, I was thinking the same thing. And I said, when I look at the other Caribbean countries that have dominated certain events at the Carifta Games, they were all in university, especially overseas. Even yeah. at the world junior level, even at the world junior level, a lot of the athletes yeah. that compete for other yeah. countries they are yeah. university yeah, we don't bring back all you know they're university at least they're in university or mm -hmm. or something they're not necessarily in high school like right. our juniors right. so it, it's funny that you 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 raise that point i was just thinking about it um today you are involved in with charity here, charity there. You're actually one of them who is a part of the Jamaica Olympians, um, some Jamaican Olympians who are a part of a nice little network charity called mm -hmm. Friends of Jamaica Track and Field. Tell me a little bit about that organization and what you guys are working on. All right, well, that's another book of story as well. Um, some friend of Lilith, Lilith Hodges, she had this friend called me to say that she would like to start a group like Friends of Jamaica to help needy athletes because she did hear an interview from one of the Olympians at the last Olympic Games that she was being sponsored by a supermarket. And she, when she heard that, she felt... Well, I'm sure all she's getting is food, which is good, but sometimes they need a little more than that. And so she asked us to start something. And by the time we were about to start this program, she dropped out. And we, I asked Ruth, what should we do? And she, Ruth said, we should just continue it and see where it will take us. But it is useful because a number of persons want to support and help our athletes, and especially around the times when we win a lot of medals. Like now, we came back with 83 medals. 84. 
Well, there is a debate right now, so I don't know. How Let us talk look. about that debate before you go any further. Which of the medal is being debate, debated no, we, right now? We don't know yet. We would have to go down the line to see which one was missing. I don't know how they calculated it. But it was calculated and it was also announced before we left that it was 84, but now I hear it's 83, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what is happening. So you're but not sure would... You're not sure if it's the under 20 boys 4x4 four four medal? Well, it could maybe they'll have second thoughts about that because before they ran, some of us felt they should just throw out that, that event and not count it. Why? So, Why? Because of what happened. You remember there was a fall, there was a so-called false start and three of the athletes did not compete. But but but, um, but Miss Vilma, why should the athletes suffer because of a mistake by the officials? Okay. All right, so that was thrown out, the fact that they didn't want to throw that event. And so this is why they ran the last three that stopped and, and merged the times in so that they could be rightfully placed. But it's life and these things happen. These things happen. You know, you fall start this year and you have to wait another year or four years to come back around, you know. But let me so, ask you, Miss Vilma, they I didn't even realize that the race was called back. It was after the race. It was after the race was finished, I heard that it was called back. Why is it that and I know you cannot answer this question, but I'm going to ask anyway, why is it that the official did not continuously fire the gun until everybody stopped since as there was a recall? There was no recall. And that's, what I'm, and that's what I'm saying. Yes, they could have. If it were in Jamaica, they would go, bye, 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 bye. Until right, they, until everybody it, stops. Yeah, it was a, a mistake. The gun fell or the gun was cocked and I, I, I heard two stories. He was putting it in his pocket and it went off. That's carelessness, you know. Careless, height yeah. of carelessness. I don't even and want to get into it because this is your interview, so I'm not going to go off on your interview. But yes, I yeah. agree. That was the height of, of um, <laughs> carelessness. But yeah, tell us a little bit more about your... Your nonprofit organization. I see that you guys have a t shirt line out. You're selling t shirt. Yeah. Tell the audience yeah. where they can find this t shirt to wear to the trials and wear during the Olympic season. Well, first of all, um, like I said, we, we, we started this program to help needy athletes. And in the beginning, many of us. Who are on the committee we were the donors especially Ruth and her family we are we are giving back because we feel duty bound that we got a lot and to whom much is given much is expected you know and we have some people like that the twins I told you about they were very poor but somebody poured love into them mm -hmm. and now it is their turn to give back so this is what we are doing and we decided to focus on a breakfast program because the children nowadays today they don't have breakfast at all mm -hmm. them with a bag of chips or a soda many of them don't have chocolate tea or minty and a lot don't have porridge they have corn flakes which is air you know so we decided to to emphasize the breakfast program. So we're sponsoring two or three schools now with money so that they can get breakfast. If, if they don't have a breakfast program at the school, then they will have to find some way of purchasing breakfast. So we give them about 25,000 for the term and that should cover the 50 weeks of school. And that's per athlete? Yes, and we only have three right now. Okay, and beautiful. It's based on funds. So we also decided to get some shirts to be sold to help with the, the fundraising so that we can continue to feed more students if possible. The shirts are now with Ruth Williams Simpson and she's in New York. I imagine sometime in the near future, she will be sending some to Jamaica for us to sell. 
and don't know if we have agreed on the price yet. We are considering 25 to 30 US dollars for the shirt. So, and they're in two colors, green, and it was supposed to be gold, but it's yellow. Green and the yellow, green. the yellow is nice though. Yes, but the yellow is not our color. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. It's very difficult. We we always have a hard time to get the gold from Puma. Yeah. yeah. I want you to tell, I want you to tell the audience what is written on that t-shirt. It is a Puma t-shirt, yeah. but I want you I'm, to tell them what is written on it. I'm sorry, I don't have one to show. I don't know if you could arrange with Ruth to show hers, send it to you, you could see, but it's Friends of Jamaica track and feel is on the front. And because we got the shirts from Puma, the Puma logo is on the left. And I love the yellow, good. yellow slash gold. Um, I just love that yeah. one. Right. So it's 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 for sale. I met a few friends at the Carifta Games, and, I, and they are from New York. So I'm going to send those contact numbers to Ruth so she can get in touch with them. But they should go fairly easily because everybody wants a piece of Jamaica. Everybody, everybody, everybody. So guys, please let me say it loud and clear so that everybody can hear. Please get your t-shirt, get your t-shirt. On the front of the t-shirt, it marks uh, Friends of Jamaica Track and Field. And you need to get the yellow. I love the yellow or the gold. I, you need to get yours for the trials that is coming up and more so for the Olympic Games. Wherever you'll be watching from, you need to have on your shirt that says Friends of Jamaica Track and Field. And please to go to their Facebook page and you will see everything outlined there. Get your shirt because the track and field segment of the Olympic Games will be right in the middle of independence. Track and field at the Olympic Games will be from August 1 to 11. And of course, our independence celebration will start from August 1 to August 6. So please get your shirt and support this um this foundation that is doing great things for our athletes, providing breakfast. And it is said that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. So Definitely. what they're, they're doing a good thing. And listen, our athletes need this. We need them to be drinking porridge, cornmeal porridge. They need to be drinking that. When I was growing up, I could not go to school unless I drink my porridge. Whether I want it or not, I had to drink it. So let us help them to get their morning porridge. Going back to Miss Vilma now, um, the Jamaican athletes continue to do some great things. It is an Olympic year. You have been to the Olympics. We've seen five Olympic Games in this new era, the 21st century. Five Olympic Games so far. And Jamaica, as one of the smallest country in numbers, um, won four of the five titles in the women's 100 meters and women 200 meters. Jamaica is the only country in history of the Olympic Games to clean sweep the podium in the 100 meters for women. And we've done it twice. We've, we did it 2008 and we did it uh, in Tokyo 2020, 2021. Your thoughts on these accomplishments for Jamaica, knowing that you were a part of this, you are a part of this legacy, Miss Vilma? I, I think it's awesome, but I would need to check on whether USA has never done They've that. They've never cleaned sweep the women's 100 meter. They oh, tried, the the yeah, the women's 100 meter. They tried to do it in 1988 with Flo Jo, Evelyn Ashford, and uh, um, Gwen Torrance, but it was broken up. It was broken yeah. up. They finished first, second, and fourth. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And that yes. happened in 64 as well. Yes. In, yeah. In 64, mm -hmm. it happened. USA won two, and my friend was the fourth, which was the same time as the third. 
Right. I think it is, it is awesome. People are wondering what was going to happen when Boat leaves, what is going to happen when Shelly leaves. But mm -hmm. if you look at girls and boys' champs, we are in good hands. Yeah. And the future will continue to be bright if the volunteers stick to the task and do what we are doing right now. Hopefully they will. But things and times are getting harder and a lot of persons don't really want to work free anymore. That's the only mm -hmm. thing that we met. And many who are now in it, the younger folk, they can't believe that we have been doing this for years. In fact, I too, when I got in it first, I could not believe that Herb McKinley and Dennis Johnson, all those persons did it for so many years, free of cost, yep. pouring their heart into this thing. And, and, and uh, you know, did so well with us. And I think this is why Ruth and I and Lilith and all the Olympians that were touched by somebody like a Herb McKinley, we really feel we, won't, we have to give back because he wasn't a rich man, but he gave his all. And we are grateful. So we will do the same. Indeed, indeed, indeed. When you look at the Jamaican juniors, the Jamaica junior athletes who are speedily emerging as a country how can we support them and ensure that they are preserved in order to successfully transition to the next level well that would be the business of the coaches so what the j3s would have to continue to do is to have seminars for them not necessarily how to coach but you know the wear and tear on the body those kinds of scientific um lectures that they might want to 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 do however you know how it is with chance you know, points points are important yeah the, <laughs> the nine point that nine points the nine points but i think we're doing a little better now we're not running the all the athletes to the ground again in the ground we're not so the teams are getting larger so they can use more athletes to bring home their trophies but that's what in the past man they had one person doing four four events you know yeah Over, it used to be three days thankfully now it's four and it might soon have to go to a week because every night we got home at nine o'clock or after mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. good thing now uh, before we go any further, I'm going in a segment that I like, which I just ask you random questions and you answer. But um, a few people on the, in the audience, they're asking how they can contact Ruth, Auntie Ruth, as I call her. How can they contact her to get their shirt? Okay. Um, she, she, please ask Ruth to put it in the chat. Her okay. telephone number, she can do that. Okay, okay, okay. Well, you can stream it, you can stream it online mm. as well. But for okay. me, if, if there's anybody watching and they're in Jamaica, they can contact me at 876-818-3624. Okay, there we go. Now for the segment that I like very much. Looking back at your career, this illustrious career, would you have done anything differently, especially as it relates to your track and field career? Would you have done anything differently? Oh, no, I don't think so. And it's because of the people that I was around for the period. I don't think I would exchange them for, any, for anybody else. It was good for me and I enjoyed it. Funny enough, I have a question here and you just mentioned something about it earlier. If your life story, your journey was to be captured in a book, what would you want the title of that book to be? I didn't um, I did not even know that you were writing something and see I have this question. What would you want the title to be? Uh, something about well, there may be hardships. Uh, something about my story in terms of how I got to California and there was nobody to meet me. Something along that line. Boy, I, I am still saying you are brave. 
hardships there may be, but you know, something to that line. I can't think about it right now. Okay. Of the three Olympic Games that you have attended, which one stood out to you the most and oh, why? And I, and I said that the first Olympic Games for me, that was my best Olympic Games. Um, just to know that you are living in a city, the whole village is like a city within a city. And when I say the, the village is a city, if you want to carry your clothes to the laundromat, it is there. The cleaners would be inside there. The tailor, if you needed to adjust your uniform, the tailor, the seamstress, everything is in the village. Supermarket, everything you can find there. Um, fun stops, especially for, for the men, you know, their games and everything. They're, they had um, evening disco. Everything was there. Church was there for the different denomination. Everything resided in the village. And that was my first experience when I Beautiful. went to the games. So I think 64. Well, 1964. Always, right. Outstanding. Name me one athlete that made you nervous when you line up in a race with them? Of course, any of the Americans, Barbara Farrell, Marilyn White, any of the Americans, only the Americans. Only the Americans. Yeah. I hope the Jamaicans are watching. <laughs> okay. Coaches have a unique skill where they are able to take an athlete from one event and put them in another event and they dominate. If your coach was supposed to change your event, change you from the sprint, which event you would have wanted to do? Nothing more than the 200. No, because but he's, go he's, he's going to move you out of your comfort zone and put you in another event. Which well, event, which other event in track and field would you run or throw or jump? Well, it would have to be the 400, which we had to do at college anyway. Okay. But, but, but I could not manage the hard training. And when I went to Pepperdine first, we had to do hills, cross-country running. I couldn't finish it. It was hard because we never trained hard in our time. You know, these athletes are training very hard now. So yeah, that's true. Say, but we never really trained that hard and nor did we have that many meets. So Indeed. I would have to be the 400, if any at all. If you were asked to coach in track and field, which event slash discipline would you want to coach? I would say the sprints. The sprints. I say, yes. I would say the sprints. What is your favorite Olympic moment for Jamaica? And I'm talking about between 1948 and 2020, 2021. Name me one of your favorite Olympic moment for Jamaica. I know you have a lot. One is enough. Yeah, well, I would say 48 when Herb McKinley's team won the medal. But before that, you remember when they had to stop because Herb got hurt? Yes, yes. The, in the four by two. four, yes. I think it was actually Mr. Arthur Wynn that, was, that got hurt in 1948. <laughs> Yes, Arthur Wynn got hurt, and yeah. and you could see the disappointment on Herb McKinley's face. And because they were they were going for the gold medal, and they were going for the record. Yes, and they were so, they were yeah. very much in a position to get it, but on the third leg, Mister Wint pulled up, and funny enough, yeah. 1952 when they went back, he started the relay. Yes, yes. Mm. Well, things things would have changed, you know, depending on what where their um, strengths were at that time. Mm -hmm. But those races are still my favorite because that was Little Jamaica from way back then, forty eight and fifty two, and mm -hmm. so those are my favorite race, races. And, ju and just to inform the audience, 1948, when we went to the Olympics, it, oh, it was our first Olympic Games as a country. No, no, 64. No, 48, 1948. Even though the flag was red, blue, and the British colors. But, yes, yes. Yeah. but it was independent. Yes, well, you could yes. say that. Yeah. Because... Um, and prior to that, in some of our 
or um, meets like the Commonwealth Games, the team consisted of one Bayesian with the three Jamaicans. So mm -hmm. it was I remember yeah. that, yeah. Not that I was around, but I read about it that they had a team. I think this was 1960 where yeah. it was Jamaica, Trinidad, and Barbados, but Jamaica had the most athletes on the team. Yes, but in one specific relay, the four by 400. Four by four, yes. The Barbadian. And I think he's still alive too. He lives yeah. in Barbados. I think he that team that yeah. team had there was a twin, Mal and Mel. Yes, Mal and Mel. Mal and Mel Spence. Yes, and they mixed up a lot of persons with 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 their looks. And they literally wrote a book about it and how they used to switch up races and lanes. Yeah. I've I've only read about those things. I I've mm -hmm. I've never really and there's not there's no video clip of those things. I but if you yeah. read his book, I think I still have one or two. They they had some books that they were selling. They wrote some books and Okay. It was awesome. Yeah. Even the Indeed. parents mixed them up. They were Indeed. so identical. Identical. Before yeah. we go any further, Dorothy Scott Genius is saying Vilma, the shirts, the shirt have been selling for $30, 30 US. If you're in the US, it's $30. And Ruth has sold 15. Yay! Oh, wow. that's good, Ruth. And Can't my be. two, my two is included, maybe included in that 15. I've ordered two. So of course I'm supporting. Um Darty, Regina Montague, who was honored at Boys and Girls Champs mm -hmm. this year. An outstanding athlete for Titchfield High School in her time, and also and an outstanding coach, coach at Dintil yes. Technical High School, who threatened their technical dominance. She is also in the audience, and she's saying, "Dorothy, I need to order one. She needs the info." So, yes, everyone, get your shirts. Um, Kino is saying, one Kino is saying, everybody rather to coach a sprint than hear me trying to coach distant. Keep it up, sir. We need the distant athletes. Well, I never ran distant, so I wouldn't even know where to start. You wouldn't know where to start? Exactly. I mean, All you have to do is let them do a lot of hill running. Let them go up in somebody saying no. Blue Mountain, Blue Mountain and... It's, it's a whole package. Oh, yes, it they is. Have, they have build muscles and they have to eat right and so Nutrition on. Nutrition and package. everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the distance per week, they have to cover a certain distance per week. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's awesome. So everybody matters. So tell mm -hmm, not, to, mm -hmm. not to worry. Yeah, indeed, yeah. indeed. Name, name a track and field performance of a teammate of yours that stands out in your memory each time you think about that it gives you the chills any teammates well maybe i have two um in 1962 carmen smith carmen smith was fourth in her hurdles race and hurdles was pretty new to us as jamaicans and the other one would be in that same games, 1962, Una Morris was third in the 400 meters at the CAC championships, um, games, at the CAC games. So those two, yes. So as early as the 60s, we were making waves, you know. Indeed, uh, indeed. The Olympic Games is coming up in short order. If you if you were to pick one race that you want to see, of course I know that we want to see all the races with the Jamaicans. But if you were to pick one race, which race would it be? Don't even think about it. Just pick one. Well, as uh, because I was a sprinter, I, I would want to see, I want to see the hundred meters female. The, the, the women, the women's one hundred meters. That's right. I think the That's entire true. world is waiting on that race. And I think those tickets are already sold out. Wow. I think the women's 100 meter at the Olympic Games is what 
every the entire world mm -hmm. is waiting mm -hmm. on that yeah. race because that race is to me is going to be the race of the championship right. and and as it is right now we have no clue where it is going which direction that race will go and yeah i am anticipating that race and of course we one of the things i don't think a lot of jamaicans realize is that jamaica is the only country with a triple gold medal um winner from the last Olympic Games is preparing herself to go back to the Olympic right, Games. Olympic. Jamaica was the only country with a triple gold medal winner. And that person is none other than Elaine Thompson Hira in the 100, the 200, and the 4 by one really. The only person in the entire track and field at the last Olympic Games in 2020, 2021, that won triple gold medal so jamaica is a big deal auntie vilma yes yes it is and from my time they used to revere us they feared the jamaicans all the time yes you know you know what i i come to discover is like when other countries defeat the jamaican it's like it's a big deal oh yes it is a big deal one carried against Barbados, beat us in the four by four, and they wallowed in the ground. They rejoiced and rejoiced until they fell to the ground. Yes, it is a big deal because they don't understand. And I saw it at the Carifta Games when our two young men pulled up in the in the two hundred meters under seventeen boys and Trinidad won. You saw his his interview, the Trini interview. <laughs> I heard a little of it. The and young the man way. said, I have been training to beat them Jamaicans, the Jamaican soft. And, and I'm like... And one of them is coached by a Jamaican. One of the Trinidadians. Everybody wants to beat the Jamaicans. Yeah. We seem That's to motivate the, the, the entire world of track and field, especially in the sprints, is motivated by Jamaica. Indeed, indeed. Auntie Vilma, it was a pleasure talking to you. But before we go, is there anything that I did not touch on that you want to share with us tonight before we go? I think you touched on just about everything. But I, I would say to the listeners and those on the platform tonight that if at all possible and you can give back to your school, or to this association, please do. Um, we said it's a breakfast program. You might have a way of um, getting vitamins. We will take the vitamins to help these youngsters in our schools. Because like I said before, it's very, very expensive to run a sports program. I mean, vitamins are expensive now, you know? Mm -hmm, okay. mm -hmm. So we welcome any assistance we can, you, you can give monetary vitamins food items if you can no problem we will take it indeed indeed whatever you can give and remember i always tell people no contribution is too small right give the five dollars we'll take the ten dollars if a five dollars you have give it if a ten dollars if a one dollar it doesn't matter give it because it will go a long way all right let's look at some of these comments now uh, ethylene tate is saying hp you are a little oh she compared me to you Bert, with the with the history the track and field history and i'm going okay. to say this now my track and field knowledge came from two of okay. jamaica's most outstanding track and field journalists mr bobby frey and mr hubert lawrence they are the people that I would sit down and listen to and make my notes. And I study the history of our track and field. So Jamaica's track and field history is, is my passion. I, I read about it. I study it. I try to find the people who have done it. So thank you very much for that, Miss Ethelene Tate, who is hiding from me. 
she's supposed to be on this program and she's still hiding. Uh, Lanceford Lions is saying, did they have false start rules? That's a good question. Miss Vilma, did okay. they have false start rules in your time? Okay. There were two were allowed um, to go a second time. But um, this rule came about because it takes up a lot of time and because we are now on TV and it's live, it can throw off, it, it, it really can throw off the, the, the viewerships and the, and the TV coverage as well. But um, it's maybe about 10 years ago that they changed the false start rule to one and you're out, but we used to get a second chance, yes. Wow, indeed. Yeah, I remember that rule. Sometimes you have three, four people fall starting in one race yeah. before it could get off. Uh, Osman Dixon is saying, correction about three gold medal winner. In 1984, Valerie Briscoe Hooks won gold in the 200, 400, and the 4x4. Four um, what is that correction for Ozzy? I'm not sure what the correction is for. Uh, Marley. One, two, three. No, you but uh, no, the one, two, three that I was talking about, you're right, is the women's 100. Jamaica is the only country in the history of the mm -hmm. Olympic Games that has clean sweep the podium in the women's 100 meter. Yes. 2008, we did it, and we did it 2020. America came very close in 1984 and 1988 by winning. 64 and, 64. and 1964 by winning gold and silver, but they were broken up for the bronze. And, and you guys can check it. There's somewhere you can check the the Olympics and see the medalist from as far back as 1908, I think. So yeah, Jamaica is the only country that has successfully clean sweep the podium. And when I say clean sweep the podium, what I mean for those who are not Jamaicans, what I mean is that they won all the medals in the 100 meters for women. 2008, it was Shelly Ann Fraser Prize. Karen Stewart and Sharon Simpson. In 2020 slash 2021, it was Elaine Thompson here, Shelly and Fraser Price, and Sherika Jackson. So, uh, Kino is saying, you saying Johan and Warren, that's a totally different race. We're actually talking about the women's 100 meters. And yes, Jamaica did clean sweep the podium at the 2012 Olympic Games, Jamaica 50 celebration with Usain Bolt, Johan Blake, and Warren Weir. I remember that race like it was yesterday. Thank you very much, my audience. You guys are very knowledgeable. I love it. Ms. Vilma, Auntie Vilma, thank you so much for being here and thank you for sharing your story. And of course, I will continue to support your nonprofit organization where you are giving back to our juniors, especially through a breakfast program. And remember, guys, please go out and get your t shirt because during the Olympics, I want to see everyone in their t-shirt. Friends of Jamaica track and field. Auntie Vilma, do you want to close? Do you have any closing remarks? Well, I just want to say thanks to you for highlighting many of us. Um, sometimes we feel forgotten. And uh, we also want to thank you for joining our group, Friends of Jamaica track and field. And you have been highlighting it on your program. And to... Um, or viewers um i'm sorry i'm not able to, to 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 see who is on but thank you all for joining us and let us stay in touch because we have a lot of work to do indeed well said well said thank you very much miss vilma for being here thank you so much thank you thanks for having me you're welcome So guys, there you have it. That was, uh, I call her triple, triple Olympian, triple Olympian, Miss uh, Vilma 
Charlton. I call her Auntie Vilma. Thank you guys for being here. And go out and get your T-shirt. It is almost the weekend. So I will see you guys next week. Same time. Doing the same thing all over again. And remember, we are here. Not just me, but we are here to highlight our legacy through these pioneers, these outstanding Jamaicans who have made us proud from as far back before even some of, some of us parents were born. So, and that's what this program is about, highlighting these outstanding people. And not just in, not just playing the sport or running the sport, but they are also giving back even though they have retired. They are giving back from their pocket. They're giving back from their time. And I don't know, um, many of you have never gone to a track meet at the stadium and Miss Vilma is not there um, giving back as an official or whatever capacity. I've been seeing her for many, 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 many years and wanted to say hello to her, but I've never really gotten the opportunity. And guess what? Now I am a part of her team. God works in mysterious ways. So guys, thank you very much for being here. Enjoy your weekend. Have a great weekend. And I will see you next week, the same time. So Africa, Europe, North America, South America, Antarctica, Oceanic, wherever Asia. Thank you for being a part of this program where Jamaica track and field legacy is the order of the day. Thank you guys very much. Juan Kino, thank you for being here. Lansford Lions, thank you. Marlene Green, everyone who joined us. I want to also thank the Olympians who were in the audience. Um, Dorothy Scott, genius, outstanding, very technical um, alumnus. Also, Etlin Tate, another outstanding alumnus from Veer Technical. Also, we had Regina Montague. So thank you all for being here. Kerry and Phillips, everyone, guys. Thank you so much for being here. And remember to share the content. Remember, like, share, and subscribe because at the end of the day, it is about one Jamaica. Okay? Thank you very much and take care of yourself. Until we meet, next week, same time.